Tianbao Fueolu. Chapter 161. Led by Dreams. Gao Zianzi sat upright in the study, so angry that he couldn't stop gasping for breath. That messenger continued, hushed and hurried, the court is already filled with arguments. His Majesty wants to convict you and General Feng of the crime of retreating, and even Lord Gashu Han. What did Guo Zi say? Gao Zianzi asked sternly. The envoy was evidently a messenger of Gao Zianzi's who traveled between Chang'an and the border. Gao Zianzi had been on campaign for many years, and had naturally planted quite a few spies in the court. As soon as there was news, it would come to him at top speed. This humble one really doesn't know. Chancellor Yang bids the two of you to leave quickly, the envoy said. Otherwise, as soon as Bian Ling Cheng arrives at the Tong Pass with a letter penned by His Majesty himself, things may turn out badly. Half a month earlier, the refugees and defeated troops that had flooded into Tong Pass had arrived in large hordes in Chang'an, and for a time, the city of Chang'an echoed with the sound of laments. The people were jittery, and additionally, officials who had retreated westward in large droves offered up tearful complaints to the imperial court. The Ministry of War suppressed all reports about the war without sending them out, and when Li Longji learned that Generals Gao and Feng had surrendered Shan Commandery and retreated to guard the Tong Pass, he had been thunderously enraged. For many years, there had been a multitude of people who were not on good terms with Gao Zianzi and Feng Changqing, and there were no lack of people among them who would drop a stone on top of a man already fallen in a well. That day, when the court met, the gathered military officials had concluded, after an extensive study, that they believed it was not impossible to do battle in Shan Commandery, and Gao Zianzi, who had pulled his troops out to ensure their safety, had actually acted with far too much caution. There was another official, called Bian Ling Cheng, who had once served under Gao Zianzi's command. He harbored a grudge for Gao Zianzi because of a whipping Gao Zianzi had given him before, so Li Longji had listened to the words of the sly sycophant and ordered Bian Ling Cheng to take an imperial edict with him to Tong Pass to seek justice for those crimes. Gao Zianzi had been on good terms with Yang Kuaz Hong in the past, but now, Yang Kuaz Hong's position in the court was already teetering on the edge of danger, and he was no longer able to make his voice heard. Li Jinglong was frowning deeply. He was afraid that this was simply another part of Yang Kuaz Hong's schemes. As soon as the commander at the Tong Pass was declared a deserter, then An Lushan would definitely march right through. As of now, the special envoy in charge of condemning them, who was also a regional army supervisor, was already on the way here, and he would arrive at the Tong Pass tomorrow. Fleeing would not do, but standing guard would not work either. Let him come. Gao Zianzi raged. When generals are out in the field, there are times when they are not able to obey their lord's orders. I, for one, want to see what Bian Ling Cheng can do. Li Jinglong was about to charge in, but in the end, he managed to hold himself back. Who is Bian Ling Cheng? Lu Su asked quietly. Let's go back, go, Li Jinglong said quietly. We'll make our preparations. After tomorrow, this battle will be unavoidable. Bian Ling Cheng was going to directly condemn Feng Changqing and Gao Zianzi of their crimes, yet he would not be able to hold Tong Pass himself. Li Jinglong had guessed about eight to nine tenths of his plan, in the name of Li Longji, Bian Ling Cheng wanted to hurry Gao Zianzi into doing battle, so that he could take back Shan Commandery and beat An Lushan back. In the dark of the night, Hong Jun suddenly awoke. He was covered with sweat, and his inner robe was plastered against his back. Ever since leaving Luoyang, Hong Jun had been dreaming every night, countless nightmares emerging in an endless stream. Lu Su had used all his might, but all he could do was make it so that it would not be so painful for him when he startled awake. However, the dreams were still there. He hadn't told Mo Rijin, he had kept it silent for the entire way here. In reality, a large part of the time, he wasn't even willing to sleep. But on this night, he had had a very normal dream. 
he had dreamt of a pack of wolves gnawing on a skeleton, tearing off what little scraps of flesh remained and consuming them. Surrounding them were the great grasslands of the southwestern side of the Shiway tribe. This was something that, on their entire journey north, he had never dreamed of. And that skeleton had been giving off a steady stream of devil chi. What did you dream of? Lu Su's voice asked in his ear. Hung Jun was greatly startled, and he almost yelped, Ghost. Lu Su immediately said, SHH, don't wake that guy up. Hung Jun tried to catch his breath. Lu Su continued, I'm not dead, don't worry. Right now, only you can hear me. A thought went through Hung Jun's head, and Lu Su sensed it. He added, Sorry, I now know of the thoughts that weigh on you. Hung Jun immediately waved his hand, indicating that that wasn't important. Lu Su sensed his intention, and he said, You sensed the dreams of one of the Shai Wei. Hung Jun thought, it was just now that that devil chi suddenly became very apparent. Though I'm in a rush to get back to the Tong Pass, this has to do with Mara, and it involves Jenga's family, so I cannot just let it be. Lu Su said, I know you want to stick your nose into places it doesn't belong, so go out and have a look. So with that, Hung Jun quietly roused from his bed. He glanced over at the soundly asleep Mo Rijin, before rising, opening the door, and walking out. In the dim, cold corridor, that faint trail of devil chi was even more apparent. Hung Jun reached out with a hand, only to find that he and this devil chi seemed to elicit a response from each other in some subtle way, as if as long as he called upon the devil seed in his own body, this devil chi that flowed through the world would treat him as the center of a vortex and come gathering towards him. How are you able to appear here? Hung Jun asked. A spell of the dream world, Lu Su replied. The white deer can travel through everyone's dreams, but for you, that's a special case. For the sake of protecting you so that you can leave nightmares behind, I left a seal behind in your dreamscape, which is why I can come in at any time. Why didn't you come earlier? Unless I had no other choice, I didn't want to disturb you, Lu Su said. After all, there are some people who don't much like their innermost thoughts being perceived, like that, oh well. Hung Jun didn't have any unspeakable secrets that he couldn't tell Lu Su, or perhaps it was that he acted the same to everyone that he met. No matter who saw into his heart, what they would see would only be the complete truth, shining and brilliant in its openness. He had also never made it taboo for others to guess at the matters of his heart. Hung Jun then asked, How's the situation at the Tong Pass? Lu Su didn't tell him that the situation wasn't good. He simply said, it's workable. There's a door ahead. He kept on heading in the direction of that energy, and they passed through the dark corridor. With a throwing knife, Hung Jun cut through the lock on a door, and he passed through the stone corridors of the castle. Whenever he saw a metal chain, he would gently slice through it, and avoiding all the patrolling Shiway guards, he arrived high up in the central stone tower. Can you enter Jenga's heart? Hung Jun asked. Who wants to get into his heart? Lu Su replied casually. He's so stingy. Hung Jun began to chuckle, and he said, This is great. You should have come a little earlier. Be a little more careful, Lu Su said quietly. There's no need for you to speak. As long as you think of something, I'll know it too. Hung Jun saw Lu Su as if he was standing right by his side. Perhaps this was because Lu Su didn't want him to feel weird about it, so he had used magic to construct an illusion. This illusion could pass through doors and walls, and acted very much like a ghost would. The scent of incense grew stronger and stronger, mixed with the smell of burning medicinal herbs. A door stood ajar. When he peeked in, the Shai Wei king was lying on a bed, his eyes shut. A female shaman, draped all over in furs, knelt in front of him, chanting something. The Shai Wei king could not stop convulsing, as if he was currently experiencing a horrific nightmare. The woman continued to chant an incantation quietly, 
her voice rising higher and lower in pitch in turns. Hung Jun looked closely, only to see that billows of black chi were rising off of the Shai Wei King's body. Who's that? Lu Su asked. Your father-in-law, Hung Jun thought. Lu Su. Lu Su didn't know about what had happened before. It was only because he couldn't hold back any longer tonight that he had bluntly informed Li Jinglong about a part of the truth. After that, he couldn't help but start to feel remorse about how he had been too rash and spoken out of turn. After he mulled it over, he decided that he would tell Hung Jun first, he had never thought that after entering Hung Jun's dreamscape, he would discover such an odd thing. Don't touch the door. Lu Su hurried to remind Hung Jun, who always swaggered about carelessly. Hung Jun was greatly astonished for a bit. He turned his body to the side a little more, but when he pushed that wooden door open, it let out a sound. That woman suddenly stopped in her chanting and turned to look towards the door. In the blink of an eye, a hand covered Hung Jun's mouth, and it swiftly pulled him back in a whirl, making them vanish into the hallway. The female priest walked towards the wooden door, looking around with a suspicious gaze, before closing the wooden door again. Mo Rijin and Hung Jun met each other's eyes in the dark at the end of the corridor. It was daybreak, and the first rays of the sun came shining in. Lu Su said, I'm leaving. You two had better be a little more cautious. Don't tell that stupid wolf that I came. Hung Jun thought, don't go. But Lu Su had already vanished. Who's that priest? Hung Jun asked, frowning. The shaman, Mo Rajin replied, confused. The old shaman's disciple. Hung Jun, what did you see just now? Early spring came very late to Saibei, and there was still much snow accumulated on the plains. Mo Rajin tied the ropes to the dogs and several large dogs dragged the little snow sled behind them as they left the stone castle of Magus. In the Shai Wei language, the name of this city meant tomorrow. Hung Jun couldn't resist turning back to look, and he said, that was your lord father. There's no time. Mo Rajin insisted. Right now, I am an exorcist, and my duty as an exorcist is to take you to find another one of Akalanatha's artifacts. Hung Jun said, if that's the case, then I would rather not go. Mo Rajin stood by the snow sled, looking at Hung Jun. A moment later, he asked, then what are the people who are waiting for you at the Tong Pass supposed to think? Hung Jun knew that this was a question with no answer. Mo Rajin hopped onto the sled and whistled, before saying, after we get it, I'll come back and take care of things here. To me, at least, our matters are more important. Though that was what he said, Mo Rajin was still a little uneasy. The sled took them towards the greater Zion Bay Mountains. Hung Jun was wrapped in a thick fur overcoat, quietly looking out at the beautiful scenery of the grasslands. Mo Rajin couldn't resist looking back once more, towards the place that had once been his home. Actually, as long as we can capture that female priest, then perhaps everything will. That's not the same, Mo Rajin said. A full investigation needs to be conducted. We can't attack as soon as we say so, and we don't have any more time to waste here. Hung Jun persisted, but Mo Rajin said, This is my home, Hung Jun. You must listen to me. The plains were vast and expansive. As the sun rose high into the sky, Hung Jun dozed off in the sled. He felt the sled slowly come to a halt. When he opened his eyes, he saw that where they had stopped was a ruined village, and the ruins were already overgrown with weeds. Jenga. Hung Jun shouted. Mo Rajin was currently crossing through the ruins, and when he heard Hung Jun's shout, he looked up at him, gesturing for him to wait briefly. Hung Jun looked across the distance at him, he had never seen Mo Rajin make such an expression. His eyes had grief in them, but he also seemed relieved. He had heard Lu Su say before that Mo Rajin had once had a heart devil as well, and he guessed that perhaps this was where Mo Rajin's mother had once lived. But Mo Rajin did not stay long. He simply circled through the ruins a few times, before he climbed back onto the snow sled. 
he didn't find anything, nor did he let himself linger, as if this was only a simple farewell for himself. Jenga. Hung Jun wanted to say something to Mo Rijin. N. Mo Rijin's head was lowered as he studied the map in his hand and the several symbols. He replied casually, I know you understand me, Hung Jun. I imagine that perhaps after this, the only home I will have is the exorcism department. In reality, when Mo Rijin left the Shai Wei tribe and came to the Central Plains, he no longer yearned for the city of Magus at the foot of the Greater Zion Bay Range. He had once wandered through Sai Wai, telling everyone that he was named Liming Sing, solely for the sake of beginning a new life. Across the plains in the distance, the cloud wrapped peaks steadily approached. Hung Jun watched for a while, but Mo Rijin pulled the ropes of the dog sled and led them in a circle around the ridge. Is that it? Hung Jun asked. Look at it from the other side, Mo Rijin said. A while later, the sun set over the west of the mountain. They had circled halfway around the foot of the mountain, and now there appeared a vast lake of ice almost a hundred mu in area. Mo Rijin asked, if you look at it from where, what do you think it looks like? I had been thinking about that ever since that day, and it just so happens that the weather is just right today. The sunlight shone down, and the lone peak that had been shrouded in clouds revealed itself in its entirety. Around it, the greater Zion Bay range stretched endlessly. On the grasslands, only this was a lone peak, and there was a lake of ice at its foot. Mo Rijin picked up one of the symbols and turned it towards him, gesturing for Hung Jun to look. On it was a sealed half-circle, with another broken line reaching out from it. The half circle and the ice lake in front of them seemed to match up perfectly, and a creek that trickled down from the summit of the mountain seemed to reach almost perpendicularly down onto the lake on the ground. Today, the weather was bitterly cold, so the waters of the creek and its waterfall had frozen over, revealing an almost brush straight line of ice, which glittered under the sunlight. That matched right up with the white line. This, Hong Jun was astonished. This must be the place. There's no doubt about it. This mountain, in the past, could only be climbed when it thawed out, Mo Rijin said. The entrance to the cavern gets sealed up by the ice. Hung Jun immediately offered, my magic can unseal it. It'll take a whole night to climb the mountain, Mo Rijin said. Should we rest a night before we head up? Hung Jun wanted to go as quickly as possible, so he organized the climbing ropes, saying, let's go right away. After he said that, he remembered that he had the Yao binding rope, so he pulled it out and swapped out the grappling hook, tying it to the rope instead. Mo Rijin said, let's not force it. After all, after we get up there, we'll still have to search. Mo Rijin suddenly quieted. Hung Jun had also sensed that something was a little off. A gust of wind blew by them, and it seemed as if something was rustling quietly. Hung Jun looked towards Mo Rijin, who made a shh motion, before protecting him as they turned towards the forest below. All around them, across the plains, from the banks of the lake to the trees, Shai Wei assassins had appeared with crossbows in hand. Hung Jun turned back to look, only to see that on the plains, behind the dunes, many more people had gathered. There were more and more people, scattered all around. They had been surrounded. That female Shai Wei priestess strode out from the copse of trees, and in the Han language, she said, Kong Hung Jun. Mo Rijin immediately shielded Hung Jun behind him. He said something darkly in the Shai Wei language, his voice filled with rage. Hung Jun knew that that was a simple rebuke. He gently placed a hand on Mo Rijin's shoulder and asked quietly, didn't Lushan tell you all to come? That female priestess said, her voice hard, what are you looking for here? Axe. In the squad of assassins, a young person spoke, and right after he swiftly said a whole bunch of words. Hung Jun looked in that direction, only to see that that was Mo Rijin's younger brother. Kiro. -er. Mo Rijin shouted, enraged, tell your men to pull back. Hung Jun and Mo Rijin were pressed back to back. Without needing an explanation, 
Hong Jun could guess at the general gist of what was going on, this female priestess was probably a Yeo Gwai that An Lushan had planted in the Shai Wei tribe. After he and Mo Rajin arrived the prior evening, An Lushan must have already learned of their movements. Mo Rajin breathed rapidly, reaching for the longbow on his back. Kiroer, however, roared back in the Han language, you dare to attack. We'll shoot you right away. Hung Jun had the pentacolor sacred light, so he wasn't afraid of arrow shafts. He asked, what should we do now? Let's fight, Mo Rajin said. I'll face down the shaman, and you. I don't want to harm your relatives, Hung Jun said. He was truly unwilling to see blood splatter the grasslands, because that would only make Mo Rajin feel even more uneasy. Mo Rajin asked, then what can we do? When I say attack, let's break free of the encirclement. They might not fire their arrows. Escape up the mountain, Hung Jun replied. Mo Rajin said, on your mark. Hung Jun swept his gaze across the entire encirclement, before saying, let's go right away. Instantly, Hung Jun somersaulted through the air, expanding the pentacolor sacred light as he did. With a turn, Mo Rajin transformed into the Grey Wolf. The arc that Hung Jun sketched out through the air was just right for him to grasp the Grey Wolf's mane. A wolf howled, and the Grey Wolf crashed through the encirclement on the banks of the river, sending people flying backwards as it dashed towards the lake. Hung Jun first blocked behind the Grey Wolf, before sending the sacred light forward to block in front, but the Grey Wolf suddenly shuddered. Are you alright? Hung Jun cried. He had no way to use the pentacolor sacred light to completely cover them, as that would impede the grey wolf's movements. A steel arrow had pierced the grey wolf's shoulder, sending up a lotus of blood. The grey wolf, however, did not make a sound. When it landed on the ice, it pushed off and slid forward, taking Hung Jun with it as they slid further down the frozen lake. Then, it turned, its wild instincts suddenly exploding, and it let out another roar. Hung Jun almost fell off the wolf's back from the impact of that. That roar caused a blizzard to erupt out of nowhere. Their pursuers dashed onto the ice as well, and the female shaman shouted something that he couldn't understand. When the grey wolf heard it, it grew enraged once more, and the hairs all over its body stood on end as it sucked in a deep breath. Hung Jun immediately covered his own ears. The sound wave then traveled outwards, stirring up the blood and chi in his chest. The grey wolf's enraged roar and its intimidation swept out across the surface of the lake, and the hard ice immediately began to crack. Lake water spewed out, and many of their pursuers that had set foot on the lake sank under the surface of the water. Hung Jun hurriedly said, Quick, let's go. End chapter. Tian Baofueaolu Chapter 162 The Cave Hides a Golden Bow The Grey Wolf turned around and dashed into the forest, but there were still arrows whistling at it from behind. Hung Jun never stopped using the pentacolor sacred light to shield them, and the Grey Wolf dashed up onto a steep precipice. The entire cliffside was sleek and had no grips, but it gathered its strength and bounded upwards, its front claws grabbing the branches of trees, its legs kicking backwards mightily, before it leapt again. Let me. Hung Jun shouted, holding on tight around the grey wolf's neck. Focus on protecting my back, the grey wolf roared, ignoring Hung Jun as it clambered up to the waist of the mountain with him on its back. Hung Jun originally wanted to secure the Yao binding cord and its grappling hook, before letting Mo Rajin transform back into a human and climbing up with him but he wasn't very familiar with this place, and they were surrounded by cliffs of ice, so he had no choice but to hold on tight to the grey wolf with one hand and use the other to hold up the pentacolor sacred light, blocking the arrows that came at it from behind. But the Shai Wei assassins had already caught up to them, and they split up as they surrounded this lone peak. On the ground, that female shaman began to chant a spell. What did she just say? Hung Jun asked. Capture this Yeogwai, the grey wolf muttered. She's the actual Yeogwai. Hung Jun retorted angrily. The grey wolf replied, 
hang on tight. Don't fall. Up high, the metal arrows could not reach them, and the Shy Wei assassins also seemed to have given up on their pursuit. Hung Jun, however, kept feeling that something was wrong. The sky had already darkened, and there seemed to be a flurry of rustling noises from the forest, as if there were countless dangers emerging from the soil at this very moment. What are you guys doing? Lu Su appeared again, and at such a crucial point, Hung Jun had no attention to spare for keeping up a farce. He replied, we've been ambushed. We're here. Who are you talking to, the Grey Wolf rumbled quietly. Hung Jun. The Grey Wolf and Hung Jun had arrived halfway up the mountain, and Lu Su immediately said, quick, help it pull the arrow out. Hung Jun came back to himself, and he went forward and pulled out the steel arrow embedded in the Grey Wolf's shoulder. The moment that the person's and the wolf's gazes met, Mo Rajin was gasping for breath, his eyes filled with unquenchable anguish and fury. He had never thought that his own younger brother would shoot him with an arrow. Hung Jun tossed the arrow onto the ground. Lu Su said, this is really quite ruthless. In his mind, Hung Jun quickly ran through everything that had happened, so Lu Su immediately knew what had happened. He came to a stop in front of the Grey Wolf, lowering his head to study it. The Grey Wolf simply breathed harshly, as if it was unable to quell its anger in that moment. Lu Su knelt down and hugged the wolf's head, pressing his cheek against it. He had no physical form, and he was nothing but an illusion in Hung Jun's consciousness, he couldn't even send up a gust of wind. Hung Jun wanted to comfort him, but he didn't know what to say at that moment. An idea came to him, and instead, he changed the topic. He glanced down and said, what's down there? Don't mind it, Mo Rajin's deep voice said. Continue climbing up, into the cavern. Hung Jun first dressed Mo Rajin's wound with a simple dressing. Lu Su asked, why are his family members like this? What kind of Yeogwai is that female shaman? In his heart, Hung Jun asked, can you leave me behind to take a look? Lu Su replied, I can't be too far away from you. Let's find the artifact first, and we'll figure out the rest once we get back. The two of them drank some water. Mo Rajin then took the lead, heading along a little path along that lone peak, the two of them running, one forward and one behind, towards the cavern. Can you find the earth vein? Hung Jun asked, huffing for breath. I can't find it. Mo Rajin replied. Let's figure that out after we get there. In that moment, something suddenly leapt out from a cliff high above. Lu Su immediately shouted, watch out. Mo Rajin turned his head to look, pulling out the dagger at his waist at the same time, slicing forward with it. When Lu Su shouted, Hung Jun had also pulled out his throwing knives and sent them flying. That pitch black object flew towards Mo Rajin, only to be sliced into two. It was a black, patterned snake. With the dagger, Mo Rajin sliced it into two, but the black snake's upper half bit down on his arm. Hung Jun's throwing knives then shot towards it, and the snake's head exploded from the impact. A snake. Hung Jun exclaimed. Mo Rajin could not stop panting. He looked down at the wound on his arm, the snake's fangs had already drawn blood. Lu Su said, shit. Quick, let the blood out. Hung Jun was well versed in medicine, and he knew how to deal with snake venom. He swiftly tore off a strip of cloth and wrapped it around Mo Rajin's arm, before using a throwing knife to slash across, letting out the blood to draw out the poison. The rustling noises increased, and in the darkness, the female shaman's voice from the foot of the mountain grew louder and louder. Countless venomous snakes that had been hibernating were awakened, and they all came flooding up the mountain. There's even more behind us. Lu Su said. I have to deal with the poison first. Hung Jun said. Go. Mo Rajin hadn't seen Lu Su, but he heard his voice. He stopped Hung Jun from dealing with the poison just yet, dragging him along towards the end of the narrow path. Hung Jun protested, wait. As he ran, 
the blood pumped quicker through his body, and the poison also spread throughout his body. Morijin's strength was already flagging a bit, but he did not stop. The two of them came in front of a thick piece of ice, and Hung Jun pulled out the throwing knives, slashing right through the ice. Morijin then pulled Hung Jun into the mountain cave. As countless black-colored rat snakes came pouring in, Morijin knocked arrows to his bow, and the seven nailed arrows shot forward like meteors, instantly killing the rat snakes that came pouring in, pinning their corpses to the ground. He can't hold out for much longer. Lu Su said anxiously. Don't get frantic. There was a bunch of stuff that Hung Jun had to do all at once, and there was a backseat spirit that was even more worried than he was. It was rare that Hung Jun would be the one to swiftly calm himself, before he got the antidote out. Morijin said, it's no use, cough. Hung Jun forced Morijin's mouth open, before pouring an entire pouch of medicine in. Morijin could not stop coughing, and Hung Jun followed that up with half a pouch of water. This medicine works. Lu Su asked. It works. Hung Jun said, it's from Ching Xiong's body, it's. Anyways, it can counteract all snake poisons. Lu Su. The snakes have a black tongue and a white underbelly, Mo Rijin said, gasping. They are venomous, but their venom is not lethal. We have the antidote at home. You've lost all the strength in your limbs from a single bite, and you're saying the venom isn't lethal. Lu Su raged. Is your brain filled with water? Hung Jun said in his heart, stop shouting at him, it's not like he can hear you. He then flipped M. Origin's eyelid over and glanced at it, the eyeball had not begun to bleed, and he said, it's been temporarily controlled, but we must go back right away to find the antidote. It's all right, Morijin said tiredly. I'm resistant to poison, and plus, we've already gotten this far. What should we do? Hung Jun asked. Lu Su asked, what is this medicine made of? Hung Jun replied, the golden-winged great pangs, bile. Mo Rijin asked dazedly, what? Hung Jun, who are you talking to? Hung Jun thought, I'd best stop talking, otherwise I'll look like a fool murmuring to myself. To the side, Lu Su asked, and where does the bile come from? Hung Jun thought, must you ask in such detail? Lu Su replied, of course. Otherwise, how can I determine what your next step should be? Hung Jun thought, it's from when he's drunk on wine and he vomits it up, is that enough? Lu Su, drinking until he's even vomiting up his bile. Hung Jun sternly thought, that's right. Lu Su, why is your medicine either your dad's that, or your second dad's that? Hung Jun. Lu Su, all right. At least it's better than eating shit. Hung Jun, who told you about that? Mo Rijin, Hung Jun. Lu Su, there's more snakes coming in from outside. Outside, there were even more snakes gathering, as if they were readying themselves to rush in at any moment. Hung Jun blocked off their path with the pentacolor sacred light, but they could not continue on like this. With a flash of inspiration, Lu Su said, Look up. Hung Jun glanced upwards, and before Lu Su could remind him, gathered his throwing knives into the glaive and slashed upwards at the ceiling. Chunks of ice came falling down, and they blocked off the entrance to the cavern. After being healed by the Ghost King, Mo Rijin said, forcefully gathering his strength, I now have corpse poison in my body, which can resist other poisons. Lu Su said, we must hurry and find the artifact so that we can go back as quickly as we can. Let's listen to him. Are you sure this is the place? Hung Jun turned and looked into the depths of the cavern, asking, Are you sure this is the place? At the same time, he thought internally, Lu Su, why don't I just voice whatever you want to say? I'll only repeat what you say, otherwise Jenga will think that I've gone mad. Lu Su replied, all right, then you can be a mouthpiece for now. Morijin staggered forward on unsteady feet. The cavern was pitch black, and they could not see their fingers if they reached out their arms. 
that pitch black tunnel seemed to travel towards the heart of the mountain. Let me borrow your shoulders, Mo Rijin's steps were unsteady, so Hung Jun hurried to help support him. With one hand, he conjured up a flame out of thin air, and the two of them walked slowly forwards. This, is where I was born, Mo Rijin said. This, Lu Su said. Your mother climbed up to such a high spot to give birth to you. Hung Jun also had a bellyful of questions, so he repeated what Lu Su had said. Mo Rijin replied tiredly, it's very illogical, isn't that right? The year I was born, the kittens were pillaging and rampaging everywhere, so my grandfather brought my mother, into the mountains and hid her in this cave. Every month, he would deliver food to her. Mo Rijin was born on the night of the full moon. All of the wolves had climbed up onto the lone peak, and his mother, after suffering so greatly, had almost suffered a miscarriage. It wasn't until daybreak that she finally gave birth to him. After he landed on the ground, the wolf packs had dispersed. But just as his mother had brought him back to their village, his grandfather had passed away. The mother and son therefore stuck closely together, living in that once peaceful and happy village. Later, Mo Rijin, ever since he was a child, had displayed an extraordinary natural talent in hunting. At six years old, he began to wander around on his own, with a group of wolves constantly gathered around him. When he was eight, he returned to this cavern where he had been born for the first time. Ever since then, every summer, he would come from time to time to take a look. Staying here makes me feel very comforted. Mo Rijin was nodding off a little. Lu Su said, he's about to sleep. Give him a slap to wake him up. Hung Jun patted him and said, stay clear-headed, Jenga. Let's keep heading forward, Mo Rijin said, gathering his strength. Before, I often thought that if I were to die one day, this place might also become my grave. Lu Su replied flatly, then let him die of old age here on his own. Don't say that, Hung Jun said. You won't die. Lu Su, didn't you say that you'd repeat whatever I said? Hung Jun thought, how can I say such a thing? He's already poisoned, you should be a little nicer to him. Lu Su, you don't understand. You have to get him angry at such a point, because only then will he be energetic. Otherwise, in a bit, he'll fall asleep. Hung Jun, we have to deal with this as quickly as possible, then head back. I got it, Mo Rijin replied, not knowing that Hung Jun's words were addressed to Lu Su. Mo Rijin's body was resistant to poisons to begin with, and with the poison resistance medicine that Hung Jun had fed him, he should have been able to hold out until they got back to the stone castle, despite the way his head spun and his body was covered in cold sweat. But sneaking inside and retrieving the antidote would be another obstacle. How much longer is this path? Hung Jun began to grow worried. Mo Rijin seemed not to hear him. He simply continued, later. I tried to keep going forward, to see what was in the furthest depths of the cavern. I saw. Put the fire out, Hung Jun. The two of them had already reached the end of the cavern, and Hung Jun put the flame away. After a long while, after his eyes adjusted to the dimness, Hung Jun could make out a vague, exceedingly dim blue light. That beam of blue light had appeared from a crack in the rock wall, and several strands of blue energy seemed to flow within the crack, as if it was a vein of blood flowing within the earth below. Hung Jun, the earth vein. Lu Su, be careful. I keep feeling as if something's locked up inside. Mo Rijin breathed rapidly, speaking quietly, back then, I hadn't known what this was. Hung Jun set Mo Rijin down against the wall to rest, while he went forward to move the rocks aside. There even seemed to be wind coming from inside. To one side, Mo Rijin continued. Now that I think about it, it's more likely than not that under there, there's, an exit of the earth vein. Back up a little. Hung Jun lifted the glaive, and with a flash of light, slashed it down towards the deepest part of the cavern. There was a huge boom, and the light suddenly brightened. 
The blue light was so brilliant that the two of them almost couldn't keep their eyes open. The ground then began to collapse, and Mo Rajin shouted, Watch out! With his left hand, Hung Jun tossed out the Yao binding rope, while with his right, he grabbed Mo Rajin about the waist. The two of them went plummeting straight down. They landed on a slick piece of ice, and as Hung Jun yelped, the two of them began to slide down swiftly, until they collided heavily with an ice pillar. Just like how it was in the bottom layer of the dragon subduing tower, light flowed across the surface of the ground. This was a huge array, and in the middle of the array was a pillar of ice, in which was frozen a golden longbow. Lu Su said, Hong Jun. Check on how the big wolf is. Jenga. Upon seeing that Mo Rajin's face was ashen, Hong Jun hurriedly helped him to one side. Mo Rajin waved a hand, indicating that he let him rest for a bit. Lu Su said, I'll stay with him. You go over there and take a look, and as soon as you get the item, let's go. So, Hong Jun went forward, sending forth a blazing flame to circle that pillar of ice. The pillar immediately vaporized and diffused into nothing. The longbow glittered. Countless rays of blue light crisscrossed below the pedestal, like thousands of threads. There were many sigils carved across the pedestal as well. I found it. Hung Jun turned back, speaking to Mo Rajin and Lu Su in the corner. This should be the moon eclipse bow. Should I take it out now? Mo Rajin opened his eyes, which hadn't yet fully adjusted to the bright light. He nodded. Lu Su said, wait a moment. Check around it first, make sure that it's safe. Hung Jun thought about how, when they had been in the deep abyss in the dragon subduing tower, the Yao binding rope seemed to have the ability to suppress the Jiao horde. It was very likely that the bow here was also suppressing some ancient Yao beast. If he took it from its position, would that cause even more trouble? Hung Jun. Mo Rajin panted. Give it a try. Hung Jun didn't dare to attack. He only looked down towards the bottom of that block, before studying their surroundings. Suddenly, he found that behind Mo Rajin's back was a piece of magical ice, in which something was frozen. Wait, Hung Jun frowned, temporarily giving up on studying the block. What is this? With great difficulty, Mo Rajin managed to stand firm. The snake poison made him dizzy, and it was difficult for him to gather his thoughts. Hung Jun circled around behind him, only to find that in another block of magical ice, whatever thing had been frozen in there had already escaped, leaving behind an empty hole. Based on the size of that hole, whatever had been frozen in there had been some sort of wild animal. Lu Su murmured, there was a Yao Gui trapped here. It's already run off. It's already run off. Hung Jun suddenly realized that perhaps, there was a very pressing problem at hand. When he looked down under the ice again, it was still a river flowing with bone-chillingly cold water. When he looked up at the ceiling of the cavern, there was a streak of ice across the top. It was probably because of water droplets dripping through the ice, and during the summer season, for some reason, water had gathered at the top of the cavern. Over many years, it had dripped down, drop by drop, melting the thick ice and thinning it out. That had caused the Yao Gui inside to escape, and near the earth vein array, it had left behind a hole that led to a cavern. End chapter